welcome to another video where we talk about road and road safety we're gonna give you some questions and answers that you are gonna get on your road code test and also when you're going for your driver's license you're gonna get a next test these questions that we're gonna give you now Pay attention because they may appear on your test. If you're interested in getting your license, these are questions. How to use the road, you should know. You understand? We're going to use the two road code book, the red book that you are familiar with. And also this book right here, The Art of Jazzing, is an up-to-date road code book. So we're going to use both books. So Mrs. Gale is going to start with the first question from her road code book. Oh, but before we begin, let me just say a big up to those persons. A number of times we see persons saying that they have gone and take the test and they pass it. Big up to you. Good job. I see that you're following the videos and you're reading up your books. So Go on do your thing, man. Remember, if you just get your license, you have six months, the permit, you have six months to get your regular general license now. So prepare yourself. Go and get those driving lessons and familiarize yourself with the road code so that when it's time for you to do the test, because you have another test to do the license, the big license now, you know. So just go and prepare yourself for the big license, right? So just go and big up yourself. And, and one more thing. One more thing. So when you get your learner's license, you have to wait six months before you can apply for your driver's license. And also, if your learner's license expired, you can get it renewed at the tax office. You understand? Remember. All right. So first question, we're taking it from the Red Book, the Jamaican Driver's Guide. And it is question 61 in the book. It says, what does this sign mean? indicate this sign what does it indicate and the answer is <laughs> hospital if you see this sign it means that you're approaching a hospital so cut your speed don't rev your engine too hard don't honk your hand too hard just respect the fact that you're approaching a hospital with sick people so drive carefully so drive and code for the big h the big H mean what again? Hospital. Hospital. And trust me, that will come on your test. What does that mean? Right? Hospital. My turn now. Go ahead. Here's a question. Pedestrian using the, the roadway should normally walk A, between the traffic, B, with their back, to the traffic, C, facing the oncoming traffic, or D, and the solid white line in the middle of the road. And this is not just for your road code test now, this is for also road safety, so listen to the answer. Right. So how should you walk on the roadway? Basically, that's what it's asking. And the correct way is facing the oncoming traffic. Now, normally, in Jamaica, I observe that people just walk on the roadside, so, and the vehicle go zoom, zoom, zoom past them. Now, you cannot put your back towards the traffic. No. What they're saying that when you are walking, you should walk in facing the oncoming traffic. Right. You can see what is coming and see if there is any danger and coming. Right. So you see what I want. Because don't allow you to walk and you hear boom. A vehicle licking in your back. That's the wrong way to walk. With your back towards the vehicle. Walk with your face facing the vehicle. So if a vehicle gets out of control, you just jump out of the way. You understand? So remember you people who have to walk on the roadside. Walk with your two eyes seeing the vehicle coming towards you. You understand? Very Your good. turn now. No? Question 62 now. It says, indicate three places where you are not permitted to overtake. So you know, everywhere on the road you can overtake. Listen to the three places. At a pedestrian crossing, 
at a humpback bridge and at a crossroad. Now, Nigel, this one is a good one. Why is it important for you to not overtake at a pedestrian crossing? That is serious because people are always walking in the pedestrian. So therefore, you should not overtake on the pedestrian crossing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see a pedestrian sign. You cannot overtake at a pedestrian crossing because people are always walking on the pedestrian. Right. So the car might be here, pedestrian crossing here, and then you come around now not realizing that a pedestrian is coming across. You might hit the pedestrian. Exactly. So motorists, just be patient. Once you're approaching a pedestrian cross and you realize that traffic has stopped, don't blow them out of the way and try to go around them because you might be hitting a pedestrian cross, a pedestrian that's crossing. And believe me, the fines for doing that is very steep. Could so you, just be patient. Could you repeat again where they should not overtake? Just repeat again. Do not overtake at a pedestrian crossing, at a humpback bridge, and at crossroads. Yeah. Don't overtake. There are, there are a few more places where you cannot overtake it. But those are the three main places you cannot overtake. My turn? Go ahead. My turn. <laughs> My question now. Which driver has the right of way in a roundabout? Which driver has the right of way in a roundabout? Do you understand? Roundabout? Uh-huh. Which driver have the right of way in a roundabout? Let me give you four um, instant. A. The driver approaching the roundabout. B. The driver turning left into the roundabout. C. The driver already in the roundabout. Or D. The driver turning right in the roundabout. The correct answer to that is C. The driver already in the roundabout. You remember the question I asked you? Which driver has the right of way in a roundabout. It is a driver who already in the roundabout. And that's why the argument says you have to give way to the vehicle on your right hand side mm -hmm. because they have, have already in the roundabout. You understand? Good. Question 63 from Jamaican Driver's Guide. Which rules should you observe when traveling in a silent zone? An asylum zone is like in a school zone or a hospital zone. What are the rules? Do not sound your horn and do not rev your engine unnecessarily. Could you imagine? But, but why is it not practical to rev your engine in a silent zone? Well, you might be disturbing patients who are getting some rest if it's a hospital. Or you might be disturbing classes if it is a school or mm -hmm. any other silent zone. You might be causing a disruption. Yeah, because if you if you're um, if you're making noise and somebody said silent, it means quiet. Therefore, when you are driving and you saw a sign silent zone, it means you can't blow your horn, you can't rev your engine, and then something. Do you understand? You keep it silent. My time now. Man, them no. Here's my question. If you feel josy while driving, what should you do? If you feel sleepy while driving, what should you do? The one that lit me all the well. <laughs> the one that lit me all the well too. I'm sure it's the, it lick you too. So here are four things, A, B, C, and D. You now listen to this. A, open your windows. B, reduce your speed. C, increase the volume on your radio. R, D, stop in a safe area and rest. The correct answer is D, stop into a safe area and rest yep i have had to on the highway pull off at the toll booth and take a five better you do that no matter how late it is in the night or 
early in the morning, better you do that than expose yourself to danger. Because falling or sleep around the wheel, danger or something. And I like what you said, that you, you, you pull over at the toll booth because the toll booth have a lay-by where you can rest or you can choose at a police station. Right. Just choose somewhere where you know that you are safe right. and rest. But you know that a lot of persons turn up their radio. That's that not why it's... work for a few minutes, but yeah. they might still drift off. Are they may... safe, but they stop. Yeah, are they may well in the window, but it's not safe. The, the only cure for sleep is what? You sleep. You sleep. Mm -hmm. Nothing can cure sleep, you know? Yeah, back in that day, they used to use matches stick and pull up your <laughs> items. So, the only cure for sleep is sleep. You understand? So, pull over and take a five. Take a five. <laughs> if you are at the intersection of a major road, how would you turn your vehicle around? Do you just take a 360? Well, the answer is reverse into the minor road then drive forward into the major road don't just pull a 360 in the middle of the road or a, or a u turn or a u turn or you know what me see some people do and if you do that if the examiner bring you out for a test drive some person put their their the, the, the face of their car in the minor road and put them on a back out in the major road. Mm -hmm. You can't back out in the major road. Because you can't see. So you can put the whole back of it in the major road. You cannot do that. Mm -hmm. And that's why they say, you back into the minor road, push out with your face in the major road. Because you can't see now. You understand? Yeah. That's it for you? Yeah, that's it. All right, my turn now. Listen to your question now. If the traffic signal change, while a pedestrian is still on the street, who has the right of way? You listen carefully you now. If the traffic signal change while the pedestrian is still on the street, who has the right of way? Let me explain that question first. Mm -hmm. For example, the light turned green. Green means the vehicle can drive. But pedestrian still a walk past. Who has the right of way? The car or the pedestrian? I think it's the pedestrian. Listen to this now. I never see car in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the answer now. A. Motorist making a turn. B. The pedestrian. C. Motorist coming from the right. Or D. Motorist coming from the left. Who has the right of way? The answer is B, the pedestrian. The pedestrian is always right. And that, that follows up into my next question from this book now. Should a driver yield the right of way if a pedestrian enters the cross? Oh, it's the same question. The answer is yes. Always yes. So some of the questions that are in this book, are also in that book yeah, yeah. but this one it more give you the answers this one give you options right. so yes and we can't overstate the importance of that once you see a pedestrian enter the pedestrian crossing even if you are the driver who is supposed to be crossing next once the pedestrian goes in they have the right away all right nobody will lick down nobody for the pedestrian crossing now here's a question that People ask me every day. Listen to this. What age are you allowed to get your learner's license or driver's license? What age? A. After graduating from school. B. 14 year old. C. At the age of consent. Or D. 17 year old. The correct answer is 17 year old is when you can get your learner's license and your driver's license. You can't get it before that. You understand? 17 upward. Right. Next question. What does a broken white line in the center of the road mean? The broken white line 
means you may overtake if the way is clear. So not because it's a broken white line, you I mean you can just willy-nilly go and overtake whenever you feel like you have to make sure that there's no oncoming traffic. Make sure you check your rear view mirror, make sure nobody is overtaking you. And once the way is clear, then you are free to overtake. I'm trying to show them a broken, uh, broken white line. Uh, let me see if we can find one here. Yeah. Broken white line. Let's All right. Here's one. So this is what the broken white line look like. See? So you have spaces between the lines. Can you see that? Yes. So this is a broken white line. It means you can overtake if, if the way is clear. You understand? Right. Mind that now? Go ahead. Oh, now, sir. See, we can't find the right answer. All right. Here it is right here. What is the nearest what is the nearest a driver may park to a fire hydrant? What is the nearest a driver can park their vehicle to a fire hydrant? A. As close as possible. B. 9 meter or 30 feet. C. Anywhere during the weekend. Or D in front of the hydrant when there is no emergency sorry which is the right answer what's the nearest a driver can park to a fire hydrant the answer is nine meter or 30 feet now a fire hydrant is where if there's a fire anywhere that is where the fire truck will stop and refill that means you can't park too close to a fire hydrant. Remember, nine, nine, what? nine meter or 30 feet. Mark those answers. Next question. On what occasion should you dip your lights? Should you not drive on bright? These are the occasions. I think everybody is dim. It says dip. Too. Same thing. Dip or dim. In, in, Same thing. Different Jamaica, books have different In Jamaica, we say dim your light. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's, it means the same thing. In brightly lit areas, in built up areas, and when facing an oncoming vehicle. So especially when you're driving dark at night, you don't want to be driving with your, your light on bright because that will definitely obscure the vision of the driver coming towards you. So um, that's why people are say bright light at night. Are you affected when you're driving at night and someone get a bright light? Oh yes, you're blind man. Blind. <laughs> so so whenever you are facing a, a oncoming vehicle, dim your light, and and they will sometimes dim there. You know, so? Yes, and one thing too, let us say that the oncoming vehicle forget to dim their light what can you do to prevent yourself from veering into the road what i do i take my eyes off the light and look more towards the side of the road and make sure that i am still inside the boundaries of the road and i'm not driving off the road and of course make sure you're not veering towards the right so that you hit any oncoming vehicles so just avert your eyes from the bright light and look towards the side of the road to make sure you are still on the road. All right. All right. And it's the, 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 the skill that I used to, if I am driving and the, the oncoming vehicle bright, vehicle is light is very bright, I will dim my light and tell them that, hey, your light are blind me. Yeah, I, when I dim my light, 95% of the time, they are going to dim theirs. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because it might not be deliberate, you know? maybe they were on bright coming down, there was mm -hmm. no traffic, and then they come upon you suddenly and they forget to dim it or dim it in time. Yes, yes. So, you know, just blink your light and they will realize that it's time for them to go and dim as well. My turn? Yes, sir. My turn. Question. Motorists should never change lane without a signaling and moving over b 
hankindehind, C, signaling, checking the mirrors and checking your blind spots, and D, checking the near, the, checking the rear view mirror. The question again, motorists should never change lane without. The correct answer is C, signaling, checking the mirrors, and checking your blind spot. So if you're driving, right, three way, three way, and you're gonna change the lane from the left to the right, you can't just change the lane. So you have to signal, you put an indicator, and you have to check your mirror. So it's not all about put an indicator and go out. You have to put an indicator and still check your mirror and blind spot yeah. before you change the lane. So you, you, you can't just change the lane so you have to change the lane and use your indicator. And that goes hand in hand with question 73 over here. What should be done after overtaking a vehicle and before rejoining the line? So you pull out to change lane to overtake and you're going back into the line now. What should you do? You should look in your rear view mirror and then put on your rear indicator to show that you're going back into the lane. So don't just fly back in. You need to make sure you're checking who is coming behind you. Check if anybody pulling up close to you. Make sure that you can safely go back in. Yeah, very good. You have any more questions, Pat? One more. Yeah. What should you do if you are driving? No, I, I don't have the diagram for that one. If at a traffic light, a policeman directs you to proceed, although the light is showing red, what would you do? So you're approaching a traffic light. The light is on red. But you see Mr. Policeman in the middle of the road telling you to come through. What should you do? Stop at the traffic light and tell the policeman, say, there you know, see, the light up on red. What should you do? The correct answer is proceed as directed. Always follow the directions of the traffic officer because they are the ones who are making sure that the traffic is running smoothly. Maybe they see that there's a pile up of traffic at the traffic light and they want to, to kind of get quickly get it out of the way. So they might be there directing. So you just move according to directions. Right. So the thing is that always obey the police officer. Correct. Once a policeman is on duty, all when they must say, Go back the opposite direction where you come from, you follow. If you have to take the soft shoulder, you take it. Whatever a policeman tells you who's on point of duty, mm -hmm. you follow that instruction. You understand? You can't go wrong, obey the police. Um, we're going to pause here um, to ask in road code questions. I remember I told you that these questions are very important because you have to pass your road code test and you have to pass your driving test by doing 18 to 20 multiple choice questions. Now, Mrs. Gill, sometimes they'll ask me, what's the procedure to get a learner's license? Now, you may apply online. You understand the procedure? You may ap apply online. But the safest way, I always tell my students and you who ask me, is to visit the examination depot in your area. Mm -hmm. You visit them, you go in and you ask them, you say, sir or miss, I am interested in getting my learner's license. What is the procedure? Now, it is their responsibility now to tell you the procedure. They're gonna give you a form to fill out. Mm -hmm. That form, don't have to fill out on the spot. You can take that form home. Before you leave the depot, you ask them if they can set for you a date to return and do that road code test. Right, because remember, very likely it's not the same day that you go, you're going to do the test. No, they have to no. Yeah, your, your test has to be scheduled. Now, the form that they give you will have a, a medical on it. You have, you have to do a medical. Then you have to get JP, or Minister of Religion, or a school principal. To, to sign three passport size picture. Now you gather those things. Then give you time enough to gather what you gather. 
Now, you bring back all those documents and the same day they give you to do your road code test. And remember that the road code test is free. You don't free. pay for the road code test at the depot. You don't pay. And you don't drive. Right. You don't drive when you're getting your road code um, what you call okay. it? test. So it's just 18 to 20. I think it's it's 18, I think. Either 18 or 20. 18 or 20. Questions and they're all multiple choice. It's nothing for you to write. All multiple choice questions. Right. So it's it's nothing nothing difficult. And if you pass the test, they give you a sealed envelope. You take that envelope to the tax office and you bring along 1,800. Right. So it's at the tax office that you pay to actually get the permit. Right. And then, then you then give you your your, your, your learner's license and that learner's license now you can go ahead and get your driving instructor and you're going to start learning for drive. You understand? But before I go, I want to show them at least two road code signs. All right. You understand? Me choose, man. You choose, uh -huh. uh, you choose two, me go and choose two. <laughs> me choose two, man. So one of my own. And uh, uh, I take this one. Take this one. So when you are approaching any part of a road and you see this sign, it's a warning sign to tell you that there might be some dangerous road coming up or there might be some obstruction or something. So anytime you see this sign, it means you should proceed cautiously. And you need to cut your speed. You know, be more careful. So it's a warning sign. The exclamation is the yellow triangle. Hey, guess what? Missing sign the regular. Yeah. When me going down Spurry Tree Hill, oh yes. And when me I come off of the Siaga Highway, them the <laughs> see them sign there. So you proceed with caution when you see this sign. What the other one? The other one is the one way sign. Once you see this sign, it means that you don't have dual carriageway here. You are only allowed to go in one direction. All right? You cannot go back and forth. You can only go in one direction. So you have to pay very keen attention to the signs that you see on the roadway to minimize accidents. All right, my turn now. I choose this one. Giveaway sign. So. Can I see? It? Yes. Give way sign. Now this sign, anyway you see this sign, it means you have to stop and give way to the other vehicles. And one of the most famous places that I see this sign is at a roundabout. roundabout yeah. It is the last sign in the roundabout is this sign. Give way. You understand? Okay, you gotta give way to the vehicle on you. Right. The next one now is this one do not enter if you see the sign on the roadside you you mean say so you do not drive in the direction of the sign it means do not enter see that you can see that right yes do not enter is a big red ball with a what kind of sign that? minus sign or a dash a dash <laughs> in the middle you see that but more i give them one more you know give them brother <laughs> stop light ahead. See that? When you see this, it means stop light ahead. You understand? Green, you may go. Yellow, prepare to stop. Prepare to stop. And red means stop. And the yellow don't mean so you must speed up so that you don't get the red light. It means you're to prepare, prepare. to stop. <laughs> you to stop at this stop line. Right. There's a stop line at almost every intersection, every roundabout, every stop light. There's a stop sign, a stop line. I mean, line, one yes. line new road. I'd tell you a funny story. One day I was driving through an unfamiliar part of Kingston and didn't realize I was coming up to the stop sign and the stop light until it was a little bit too late. And I accidentally went over the stop line. Police catch me. I didn't even see that there was a police one there. Wow. Police catch me. I was halfway over the line. And she nearly gave me a ticket. 
I have plead before, plead my way out of it and tell her, say, no, because I'm unfamiliar with this part of the road and yada, yada, yada. Anyway, she had pity on me. So be very careful. Look out for the lines, look out for the yes. signs. Stop before the stop line. Right. Now push your wheel across it. Because, my God, how not so unruly? Many times, you know, listen, on a put your front gear over Yes. You know, the stop line is there for a purpose, though. Mm -hmm. You know that. A bit of plenty of not. Don't know the purpose of that stop line. All right. Let me tell you one people on the phone, Rapu. The stop line is for you to stop so that when there's a bigger unit, like a trailer or a truck, I will come around. They have ample space to come around and drive beside it. If you go over a stop line, the trailer cannot maneuver yeah. its way because you're going over too much into the road. Mm -hmm. So the stop line is to avoid you from going over into bigger vehicle units. Space. I've never heard anybody yeah. explain that. that yeah, man. True. It's true. Me share your food give you. You eat for me give you, brother. <laughs> you know, it's like that. Me share your plate of food. You eat what me give you. Yes, no come over when I'm my food. Hold the ground. So, 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 stay in the lane. Stay in the lane. <laughs> lane. So, so these are some questions that you can look out for. And hopefully by next week, we give you more. More. You understand? As usual, if you watch a video, you like it, share it. Um, tell other friends who are interested in, in, in getting their license that anchor is the man to follow because we try to keep you up to date you understand and ask us question yes man in the comments below go ahead and ask your questions make your comments tell us what else you want us to do what else you are interested in and for all of those who are going for their driver's permit their learner's permit and their driver's license all the best keep watching the videos and study your book do me a favor um i want to give them a link tell them that link for me for okay. some for some mac for some some mac tests right some additional questions and tests it's www dot drive safe jamaica dot com so it's www dot drive safe jamaica dot com them, them can't see it no them can't see it hold on yes there it is you see it yes all right <laughs> if, if you go on that website website you have six practice tests. So you can sit down in your, in your bedroom and do them tested by yourself and get yourself prepared. You understand? Because Anka don't want you to feel it. Anka don't want you to feel it. You understand? Because Anka makes sure you say everybody is a driver. Mm -hmm. You understand? And drive safely. Because our aim is to make Jamaica a safer place to drive. You understand? Because I am a driver. She's a driver. I want to make sure that when we are on the road driving, the person in front of we, behind we, and beside we are careful drivers. So we're going to always hear a help because we don't want to drive around no lunatic. You understand? <laughs> eh -eh. So that's it again from the anchor. Look out for more videos in the coming days or week. Big up on yourself. Take care and drive safe. Yeah.